Welcome to part five of my Ultimate Doom Builder tutorial series. I did a little bit of work off camera, nothing major. First thing I did, I kind of added this UAC silver um, marker thingy, sort of like a flag or a banner. Sometimes I like to put those around and it's just decoration, serves no purpose. Over here on the right, I put a little inset door with some divider textures up here, more support three. We're getting a lot of support three everywhere, but that's not necessarily a bad thing because what it's doing is it's it's given us a visual theme that's coherent as we're moving along. So even got divider textures here, you know, on either side of this silver UAC panel. Over here, I've got this is just big door one sort of a trope of mine. I use that door a lot. I really like how it looks. I don't necessarily and you know, if you look at some of the other door types, um, it's it's a big door, but it's short. It's only 96 units high, whereas the other big doors are 128 high. I don't use those as much because they're just too big, honestly. You know, it, it just depends on what fits with what you're going for. Actually, let's let's get a staircase in first. We want the player to be able to come up here. What I'm going to do, uh, go to vertex mode, and I'm just going to drag this out to be a little 64 by 64 area. Um, I don't like the ceiling overhang, so I'm going to draw a line here. Just drag this up here, change it back to sky, and make sure the brightness is 192. This will be 192. Upper. This will be our top step. Now what I'm going to do, go back to overhead mode. I'm going to create some boxes that are 32 by 64. And again, this is unscripted, this is unplanned. So I'm gonna just start with three and see how this looks. What I'm looking for, I think, is for the steps to have a height of eight, I think, which is one tick of the mouse wheel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click, click these three steps, drag them all the way up. Here's a trick I do when laying out steps. Now, obviously I don't have enough. Go one click down, deselect this. Go one click down, deselect this. One click down. And I'm going to need about three or four more of these. Draw three, see how close that gets us. Okay, bring it up so it's even. One click down, deselect, one click down, deselect, one click down. I need one more step. That was close. Not bad for just winging it. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and select all these floors. Select all these floors and we're going to use one of the step textures. There's a steps category that doesn't have much. There's two of them with different rotations. The standard Doom format, you cannot change the alignment or the rotation of flats. So they give you two for two different rotations, otherwise you'd stuck. So that was the wrong one, so we're going to use step two. And that looks good. So like I said, in Doom 2 format, you can't change alignments on floors. If I select this, hit the arrows, it makes error messages, and at the bottom it says, floor ceiling texture offsets cannot be changed in this map. What that means is, in your overhead mode, you really gotta look and make sure things are grid alone. So I don't know how well you can see this, but there's this these blue lines. Um, at this size, every fourth division is a blue line. That's your 64 by 64 grid, which is really helpful for aligning floor textures. So if I just come over here and I draw something that doesn't match that, like here's another 64 by 32. This will be another step. Bring that up. Copy. Paste that over. See how that's misaligned? There's nothing I can do to fix that except to just move the sector. So that is a major limitation with your standard Doom mapping format. So you'll see as I'm moving the sector around, like the texture doesn't move. It's just fixed to that grid. So if I wanted this to line up, then I am forced to design my map in such a way that it follows this map grid in order for that to look good. So yeah, just be aware of that. If you're doing GZ Doom, UDMF, you have a lot more flexibility. But again, this is Doom 2, targeting Crispy Doom. You gotta work within the constraints of that game engine. Now what I'm gonna do, I don't want that step there. S for sector mode, delete. B for vertex mode, select all four of those, delete. That step's gone. 
Okay, mapping trope as far as me. I'm gonna grab these lowers here, select all these at once, and I'll grab the top one too. Right click, use the lowers. We're gonna use this step one. I use that a lot. It's sort of like a tech based step that kind of looks to me like maybe it has like an LED light to illuminate it or something like that, but I use that a lot on steps. And then for these sides, let's do something better than support three. We're using support three as a dividing texture. So if we use that as a non-dividing texture, I think it, uh, you know, visually it doesn't work as well. I like my dividing textures to be dividing textures and nothing else. Let's just try metal one, see how that looks. Or let me grab all these again. I can just shift click. Try like metal two. I think that works because it kind of gives you these panels that line up with each step. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay, so now we have a staircase so the player can actually get up here. I want to revisit this silver UAC portal. Now if I open up Crispy Doom here real quick, I'm going to show you something. This is a, just a pet peeve of mine. How you handle this is completely up to you, but this is something I like to do. One thing about this is that floor, the little floor down there is short enough that you can step on it. So I can step up in here. And to me, that's just a little weird. I find that distracting. If I'm trying to run down here, I can you know, step up here and get caught. There's nothing special about this. You can't interact it. You can't open it. It's just a decoration. So what I will normally do in a case like this, go to visual mode, line def mode, grab this front line def. I'm gonna make this impassable. So what that does is it's gonna prevent you from stepping through that line. So if I launch Crispy again, oh, somehow I screwed up an alignment there. Oh, fix that in a second. I can no longer step up here and I just slide past it. So to me, that's better gameplay because I'm, you know, you, you've got the geometry here to make it visually interesting, but it doesn't get in your way. It doesn't keep you from doing anything. You can't catch on it or get stuck. So it's sort of like in modern games where you, your, your visual meshes might not 100% be the same meshes that are used for collision detection. So you're keeping it visually interesting without frustrating the player. Now, I'm not sure what I did to this. Apparently I clicked that or hit a button and selected that. I don't know. But yeah, a lot of little insets like this or, or especially windows, which we'll get to in a minute. You know, I will make the line def impassable and we'll keep you from stepping up in there. Okay, so I think that's gonna be it for this segment. Um, next segment, we're gonna go ahead and create a room in there and start looking at doors and windows.